perspective at Skin Rocky, talking about the small technical difficulties we had there. Um, we will go ahead and burn through some of these slides so we can get to the meat of the um, dashboard. Uh, but also joining us today, we have Raul Jackson um, from Brooklyn Public Library. So um, today we're going to go through introduction to IT. We're going to dive into Brooklyn Public Library's case. And um, at that point, I'm going to turn the ball over to, to Raul. And then we're going to dive into a live demo of uh, Brooklyn Public, Public Library's dashboard. Then to talk about the Meraki solution and next steps. So about Cisco, back in 2012, we are Cisco's cloud-managed portfolio. So we have everything from switches to access points to firewalls, mobile device management, Meraki Insights, as well as uh, surveillance cameras. So we have a full portfolio, and the beauty of Meraki is that you now can work simple by managing your portfolio through your dashboard, which is also known as a simple pane glass, um, being able to manage and configure things in one place. So we have thousands of customers um, who are leader in cloud-managed IT, and we're among the fastest-growing portfolios. So just to kind of give a sound of the out of uh, we are scalable. You can add unlimited devices in minutes and and um, and manage those devices and deploy them in minutes. Um, we have a 99.99 uptime SLA, and also we are fully HIPAA and PCI compliant. You can find out more information on our reliability and security through um, meraki.cisco.com slash trust page. So why Meraki for library and government IT teams? So as far as better connectivity, we can support high density and branch locations with built-in analytics and uh, also monitor the performance of the WAN. Um, we also um, have the ability to improve security and the uptime so we can protect your visitor data, um, connect the branch locations and improve, and improve public safety. It's also incredibly easy to deploy and manage the Meraki solution. So you can pre-configure all the products before you even get your product on site. So through the dashboard, you can configure the switches and APs. So as soon as you get them shipped to you, all you have to do is plug them in and you're ready to go. Um, also, uh, remote management simplifies your day-to-day. -day. So we actually have an app where you can um, check out the dashboard, manage and configure through the app. You can also take a look at your security cameras and surveillance through our app. Um, so this is an important key part of Meraki that now you're no longer bound physically. You can be mobile with your network uh, management. And then that leads into time efficiency. So you can spend more time on library programs and services instead of having to spend the time managing the network of the library. So we are trusted by thousands of government and library accounts. Um, just to kind of give you a name, name a few, City of Fayetteville, Brooklyn Public Library, which we're going to be hearing about today, um, the City of Dalton, uh, and this list is just growing and growing. So um, now I'm going to pass the ball over to Raul Jackson the manager of IT uh, or the manager of technology service over at Brooklyn Public Library. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, do you hear me okay? Okay. All right. Yeah. So um, I guess for everyone here, Brooklyn Public Library briefly is, uh, we are currently the sixth largest library in the U.S. Um, Chicago, because we were fifth at one point and, you know, Chicago kind of knocked us out of that pace a little bit. Um, we have 59 branches across Brooklyn and we support approximately 2.6 million residents. And um, our IT team, at least the team that supports the wireless network, our public wireless network is really made up of pretty much two people, myself and another gentleman, uh, one of our engineers by the name of Gerald Horton. Uh, we do have a large IT team for supporting other technologies throughout the library, but we are the gentlemen that, or the people that pretty much support the, uh, the, the public wireless network. Um, essentially, some a number of years ago, we needed a, an enterprise-grade 
solution to support our wireless expansion as we grew. We selected Meraki many, many years ago, actually pre-acquisition um, of Cisco. And uh, we like to talk the fact that we are customer number 20 um, when, when, we, when we started with Meraki and um, we've grown and used Meraki uh, exponentially ever since. Um, Additionally, we started off essentially with wireless solutions. That's all that we really needed to, to, to accomplish. Um, we needed to find an easier way to manage our wireless network. I mean, we, we came from a situation where we had a old physical um, consumer-based access points at our locations and it required someone to go out there to fix it and stuff like that. So we decided we needed a centralized managed type of solution that would allow us to uh, and deploy access points and solutions easily. Um, he pretty much uh, provided that option to us. It lived up to, you know, to actually more than we expected. And, and uh, as that went on, which was which pretty much allowed us to, to manage our Wi Fi, um, I'm sorry, our iPads and such. We get some funds in getting iPads. Um, we recently or a grant uh, by the iPads. So all of our locations now contain iPads that uh, staff uses for public and stuff like that. And, um, and as such, we use Meraki's system manager now to uh, manage those iPads, to deploy them, to manage them, and you know to keep them running. Uh, we. I mean, that's Perfect. pretty much what we have done thus far. And um, uh, Raul, quick question about the grant. How did you find out about that grant? Uh, how did we find out about it? That's a very good question. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't have the details on how we found out about it. I know this, this grant has been, in, has been available to us for probably about four years now when it actually came to fruition. And um, it's, uh, it's an organization that provides uh, funding for programs that are tailored for young, uh, young our younger audiences, and um, it pretty much requires that we use these funds for for those types of spending. So essentially, not only did we purchase iPads and such, we purchased stuff like three D printers and 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 uh, um, uh, Lego robotics uh, devices. We purchased. Um, Lego, like I said, Lego Robotics, we purchased uh, ooh, a whole lot of things, man. We purchased televisions, flat screens, we purchased um, PA system, the most of that's been built in the programming at branch for, for, with this money. Um, does that answer the question to some extent? Uh, yes, thank you. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Okay, so uh, one of the things that we we felt was really a, 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 a I guess a prime feature for in, in Meraki was the ability to easily de deploy our access points. So um, currently we we have at least we have quite a bit of access points out there in our system right now. Um, we probably have. Oh, I don't have a correct number, but we have a lot of access points out there right now. And we looked for you know, the installation was pretty easy. What we do is we we are so we have our networks named after our branches, our branch locations. So let's say it's Williamsburg branch. And we call it Williamsburg network. And we are pretty much assigned a specific access point to that network. We send it out into the field. You know, at our branches we have TRSs or we have our tech tech. tech Technical support, technical support reps that work here at Central as well, that um, could also take a, an access point out to the branch. Simply plug it in, and it comes up on the dashboard. And um, one of the things we found that, you know, that enabled us to do was pretty much cut down the time that it takes to deploy on a large scale. Um, hence the reason we were able to do it in about one and a half months. We have a uh, a compendium of access points, essentially from MR 16s which takes you back a little bit to. Uh, MR74s. We have two outdoor locations as well, where we provide um, internet access via Wi-Fi using some of the uh, the outdoor access points that Meraki provides. Um, 
for our public users, when they come to our library to, to, to utilize the internet, um, they are faced with a splash page. Uh, what we have decided to do is host the splash page ourselves. And a splash page where they agree to those applications and uh, pretty much that from how they able to browse the internet. Um, that allows us to populate splash page anything that we want, a little bit of information, a little bit of picture regarding anything that might come. Occasionally, we make those minor changes. It's not something that we edit on a regular basis. And uh, with that in the case, we find that um, at our locations, at our branches, folks are able to use the wireless for, 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 for varying, varying things. Um, this past August alone, we had something like uh, 137,000 uh, daily users over the month, the, for the month of August. And um, that's, I think, pretty impressive. Uh, Additionally, to the access points, once we've had the access points in place, we realized that we needed to, to I guess, a little bit more visibility into our network to see what was happening, some troubleshooting tools to determine, you know, what is down, the things that are happening. And, um, and as such, we did uh, some MS220 users, and we have a couple MS. And we deploy those at the branch level as well. So that allows us now to pretty much troubleshoot uh, cable issues because one of the things we tend to run into occasionally are uh, bad cables. And we can do that by pretty much doing a simple cable test on the, uh, on the switch. Uh, we can reboot a single port if we need to. Um, that allows us to not have to bring down the entire switch to troubleshoot an issue. Um, oftentimes that solves the problem for us if we and um, that provides us with some flexibility that we didn't previously have. Um, for our systems manager, right, we have about over 800 devices, iPads and MacBooks that we manage. And um, one of the beauties of the system manager is that it integrates cleanly with uh, Apple's device enrollment program and Apple's volume purchase program. Um, and both of these allow us to pretty much create a zero touch type of provisioning scenario where essentially an iPad can come in. Um, we pretty much don't have to touch the device. We set up our networks with in Meraki System Manager. Also based on the branch, we apply our policies, we apply our restrictions, we determine what apps go to what devices, and we can pretty much send the device out to the branch. They turn it on. It takes us, takes them, takes the app through the So Apple system set up window that process. She takes you to our home steps. This is allowed to remove the steps. Like say you don't want folks to set the language. I don't think that's one of the actually prevent that from having from being pop, uh, being visible to 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 the to the user. Um, on the iPads, we restrict a bunch of things like access to the iCloud, uh, app installations, and stuff like that, so that we can control that. We have a process in place where folks can essentially reach out to our IT departments, and there's a list of the apps that they would like to purchase. We purchase it through the uh, VPP and provision it to the device. Folks, are, they, they get it, it's pushed automatically. They connect, they download and install the apps, and um, they use them. Um, one of the problems we had before was uh, uh, we had a problem using it with, with Apple IDs and such, and folks locking the devices and having problems to get them unlocked. This can make it Apple pretty much manage the way the device is, is handled, period. And um, it works very well for us right now. Um, we use a lot of tags, which is something that's really really helpful within the Meraki on both the wireless and the manager side. Um, you can use specific tags and you can assign on the wireless side, you can assign people tags. Um, on the systems manager side, you can, uh, can assign apps as such like that, which is really helpful and amazing. Um, and that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, I don't know if anybody has questions on my stuff, but 
that might be it. Um, so. We'll be able to, to open up the floor at the end of the presentation for any questions that mm -hmm. come up. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Raul, for, for going through why Meraki and what certain features and key things that you guys are using with the product. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dive into a dashboard demo. Um, we're going to show you guys, um, you know, exactly how, Raul, you're using the Meraki dashboard and, mm -hmm. and touch on those products and those features um, that you discussed while we were going through those slides. So before we dive into that dash, into your dashboard, just wanted to quickly show um, this is what it would look like on the Meraki San Francisco network. So we've broken it out into networks here, um, and we've created one for Meraki San Francisco where we have the switches, wireless systems manager, um, phones, camera, and cameras and insight all in one platform. Um, so just to kind of give you that, show what that would look like on the San Francisco Meraki platform. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and dive into um, some of, of your, your dashboard, Raul. Um, mm -hmm. So this is what it would look like from an organizational perspective. You can see the different networks here that we have um, that you've broken out the net, you've broken out your dashboard into the networks. Um, we're going to dive in particularly into the central library today, which uh, um, and correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, Raul, but it is the branch. Uh, but just I want to engage you guys. It's kind of an overview of everything, and you can see how um, the dashboard is showing all the different networks and how it's spread out over the the um the city and if we take a look at the satellite version here um we can actually see it uh via satellite what that would look like mm -hmm. and we can zoom in zoom out and um go to those APUs etc um by viewing this page and so the the important thing to note here is that with Meraki you can get as granular as you like so right now we're seeing an overview um kind of, of of the map of how the APs and switches are laid out. But if we want to, we can dive into any of these access points particularly and um, take a look um, on an individual level. So now I'm gonna dive into the access points here. We're gonna go over access point switches and mobile device management. Okay. Um, so these are the APs that they have um, in the central library branch. Mm -hmm. Um, you can see uh, up at the top here, you have um, them that are offline, and that are your 42 APs are online, and we can actually download this list. Um, just like Raul mentioned while we were talking, um, he mentioned how he's tagged his switches and APs. And Raul, could you maybe talk a little bit about the tagging and, and that process and how that was? Um, for you when you guys were going through and just organizing your network? Sure. Well, one of the one of the things that uh, I guess you can do on Iraqi APs and many other APs is pretty much broadcast multiple SSIDs. And um, what we have here are a few SSIDs that are assigned to specific uh, access points based on tags. So for instance, what you're looking at here in this first, that very first access point that, that's up here, the BPL um, central literacy access point, we have a BPL guest network, which we created uh, not so much for public, but for folks that visit the library for meetings and such. And uh, we needed to put that uh, SSID on specific access points. Uh, not all the access points are really uh, broadcast that SSID. And as a result, we use the tag to place it on specific access points, and you can select which ones we broadcast at SSID, and that's how we handle that by tags. And so if we needed to change, uh, if we needed to broadcast that SSID from another tag, let's say central checkout desk that does not have that SSID, we can simply put a tag right there, and that's it, the same BPL guest tag. And um, it allows for amazing flexibility in that respect. Um, that's pretty much how we use it right now. Um, nice. So um, just to tap into the SSIDs, so um, in order to create an SSID, you would go to wireless, and then you would go to SSID availability. So these are all the APs, and we'll dive into an individual AP in a moment here. But you go to SSIDs, and sorry, wrong page. There we go. <laughs> 
So these are all of the SSIDs that um, we have. And if you want to see all of them, we can see all of them. Some of them are disabled. Um, you can see how many we have not configured yet. Um, let's hide the disabled one and talk about some of the ones that we've created here. Um, so there's a number of different ones we've created. Uh, the B, BPL guest is the one we were just discussing. So um, in order mm -hmm. to enable an SSID, it's as simple as just saying disabled or enabled. So if you were to create a new one, you would say mm -hmm. enable. And now we can go and edit it. So um, just like what we're just chatting about that we've uh, configured um, for this particular SSID. And so that would be an access control. So you can either access it the way that we just did or dive into access control. And if you need to switch at any moment any SSID, you can go ahead and do that as well. Um, so you can see, Raul, you put this into nap mode. Um, and yeah, and that's, that's pretty much it. Um, so we're going to go into now, let's dive into one more. Um, I just wanted to show, so like what Raul was talking about in the beginning, uh, I have created a custom splash page, um, and it's also very easy to set that up. So this is what they see when they log in. Um, to the internet. So if, if you wouldn't mind, Raul, maybe talking a little bit about mm -hmm. that. Sure. Right. So initially what we, when we first decided on using a splash page, we tried to use, um, you know, just the Meraki themes that comes built in. And uh, as time went on, we realized that we needed a little bit more flexibility with regards to what we can do and what we wanted to display. And, um, and I guess the, the overall look and feel. And uh, this, this is what you see here on the screen is what we came up with. Um, essentially, it's a, it's a, it's a web page that sits on one of our web servers. And in uh, Meraki's console, we are pointing to that. Uh, you would see an option for us to enable the splash page. It's called the click-through splash page. And that's what we're using. And um, below, we pretty much point to the uh, here we are, right? So it's called click through, right? And uh, essentially, lower down, it points to the actual website address that uh, the splash page, where the splash page resides. But actually, no, it's not on this page. This page only has the, the wall garden ranges, if I'm looking at correctly. And the actual location of the splash page is under the splash page link. Yeah, the address, essentially. That's where that goes. Yeah, so we've got the splash page. You would go to yeah. splash page here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you would put the SSID that you want the splash page for. So we went, we went to that one, and mm -hmm. then uh, they provided that custom URL there. Right. So okay, great. Well, now let's dive into an individual AP. Um, so let's go back into the access points. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a particular AP you want us to dive into, Raul? Or can I just pick anyone? Um, I think you can pick anyone. You can pick anyone. OK, cool. Yeah. I'm going to do central main door. OK. Ah, OK. So this is an MR52. Um, mm -hmm. You can see the back address located at the top here, um, the location, which we we showed you kind of what it looked like as an overview. So this is if you were to drill down. Um, the SSIDs that are associated with this access point, you can see all of them listed, but the ones that are highlighted are the ones that are currently being broadcasted on this particular AP. Um, as we go down, you can see all clients that are associated with the AP. Um, so I just clicked into a client, and we can see from the client that they're connected to this AP um, and dive into those tools as well um, and show, you know, the application details that are being uh, used in this particular client. 
particular iPhone. Um, but going back to the I, um, so the troubleshooting, um, we can blink the mm-hmm. LED light, and I think uh, you've used the blink LED light for to help with that. Correct? Yes, that is that's correct. Please for trouble. At the branch, so we have a lot of resource specialists at our branch that we speak to on the phone and say, hey, we're blinking the LEDs. Can you tell us if you see it? And they say yes, no, um, those types. That, that's pretty much some of the scenarios we use it for. Perfect. Um, pretty, so, yeah, um, straightforward. so, yeah, using that, um, especially in different branch locations, being able to have that ability to, to use it for troubleshooting. Um, and then an RF. Um, so RF is wireless troubleshooting. So you can actually see when an event happened with an AP. Um, looks like at this point in time, um, this wireless access point hasn't had any events. But you can also check this data out um, for the last week, last month, um, last two hours. Um, so and then you can see here the total utilization um, and all of that, and the meshing neighbors, possible meshing neighbors. So. Um, now I'm going to transition over to switches. So going into the switches at the central library, um, they currently have nine switches, same kind of format as the APs. Thing to note here is that the Meraki uh, platform tries to make it as consistent as possible. So, so if you know how to do your, you know how to do your switching um, because that's the way it's laid out. We've laid it out so that. Um, you can have everything um, everything in one place and everything very simple to manage. Um, one thing I wanted to note about the switches is that um, with the switching feature, we have something called the topology page. So I just mm-hmm. wanted to quickly show what it looks like in the Meraki San Francisco network for the topology. And while that's loading, um, so again, these are all tagged central. Um, let's dive into a switch. And again, very similar format to how um, the AP was laid out. So um, going back to the topology page, so this is something that only comes with our switching line and it's a topology of your entire network. You can see all the APs, the cameras. Um, you can also go to the switches here and dive into those individual switches. Um, these diamonds are, uh, this is actually a Cisco device. It recognizes it on the dashboard, but you cannot click in and do the editing and configuration in the Meraki. Um, so you download this view, print it out, that way it gives you a visual topology of everything is connected. Great to use, um, especially for troubleshooting too, um, for for your network. Um, so diving into a particular switch, let's say we wanted to click into one of these switches. So now we're in a switch. Um, these are all the different ports. We can see the ones that are black are not being utilized right now, um, but the little electrical bolt means that it's accessing PoE. Um, mm-hmm. And if we go down, this is actually an MS25024 port. Um, if we go down, we have all of the, we can actually go into the topology from this page. We can see all the clients connected to this switch and to the clients, just like we did with the access point. Um, We can take a look at the tools. So this is, again, um, where you are going to be troubleshooting. It's very easy to run a cable test um, for for the port. Um, And actually, if you go to the summary, you can just click on one of these ports directly and run a cable test on that particular port. So it looks like we're good. so now I'm going to jump into um, the port configuration. So the beauty about Meraki is that, especially with switching, is that you can configure different switch ports across different switch closets. So I think this is incredibly important, especially with a bunch of different branches that the library might have across the city, 
is that um, you don't have to go to every single switch now and plug in, plug into those ports, configure. You can actually do it um, through what we call virtual stacking. So we're in the switch ports right now. This is just under switch, switch ports. And um, we can see all of the different switches here, all the different switch ports. And let's say we want to configure um, these different switch ports here. Okay. So now we're going to go to edit. And now we can go ahead and edit the settings on these switches. So um, we're going to select update for now we've edited those particular switches by using virtual stacking. Anything else you want to add here, Raul, on, on your experience using Meraki switching? Um, no, I think I think for us it's, it's it's really about the visibility and the, the ease to the ease to, to to configure and troubleshoot. That's pretty much it. I mean, um, we yeah. this this suggestion we've never actually used in this manner, which is something I actually learned. Oh, nice! <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> Because we usually go directly to the switch. Yeah, we go to the switch, we go to the port, and we do whatever make changes we need to make at that level. Okay. So again, um, you can. So you would just do your configurations there. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Correct. Well, again, this is another example of getting grant. You can get as granular as you like, or um, not. So this would be, you know, configuring that particular switch port. Um, but if, again, you needed to configure different ports across different switches, you, you could do that in the main um, switch ports view. So, um, so that's how you would do both. So now we're going to transition over into Systems Manager. So Systems Manager is our mobile device management platform. Um, it's just a license that sits on your, um, on your dashboard just like your other products. And we are going to dive into how you guys are using the MDM today. And um, so just like, again, just like with the APs and um, those different, or, and the switches, uh, similar format. So we have, these are all of our devices that are on roles in Meraki Systems Manager. Mm -hmm. um, well, can you give us a little background on the kind of devices you guys are using? So we're using a combination of uh, pretty much through Meraki, we're using a combination of iPads and uh, MacBooks. We have varying, varying model iPads uh, um, from the older models to the current ones, iPad Air and stuff like that. And um, we manage these on a branch level. So each branch has a set that they use and they use to utilize various apps. Some branches have specific requirements on with regards to what apps they need. Um, others, it's a, it's a standard set. And we pretty much use that zero provisioning, zero touch provisioning type of uh, methodology for deploying them. And once they're at the branch level, if any changes need to be made or any modifications or anything like that, they reach out to us and we do that all remotely through Meraki's and uh, dashboard. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, these devices, those that are labeled DASNI 09 and such, those were purchased through the DASNI phone that I mentioned earlier. Um, and we have others that certain divisions uh, may have purchased that, you know, through various funding and whatnot. Um, and it brings us to quite a total of a number of devices, probably have about 800 type devices like that that we manage. But right now, we only manage the iPads and some of the MacBooks through the Meraki uh, Systems Manager. Fantastic. And uh, we we can do, so the Meraki Systems Manager works with Windows, um, with mm -hmm. Chrome. Um, we do have a partnership with Apple, um, so we work well with, with Apple as well. Um, but just we are um, able to, you are able to use MDM on other devices as well, um, other kinds. And I'll just in a moment. So diving into one of the devices here. Um, so we went to this one. Um, we can see that it's an Apple, it's an iPad. Um, it's been tagged. So again, that use of tags mm -hmm. is very important. Um, we can see where the device is located. Um, 
-hmm. We can, for security, um, we've created a geofence, which is something that I'm going to go into in a moment here. But basically what that means is the device, once it reaches, once it goes outside a certain radius, you will get notified um, and notified that that device left that radius. And you can actually configure um, different settings for that as well. Um, we can see the storage of the device the status, the online status, and then we also have a number of different troubleshooting tools. So because I'm not a network administrator, I cannot go ahead and do these, these different tools uh, live um, for this particular device, but you kind of get the idea. You can either lock the device, erase it, selectively wipe. Um, we can do airplay, power control, re reboot, shut down send notification, get a GPS location, um, and um, do use a number of different settings for this. Um, we've created these, in, these restrictions, and I'm gonna go ahead and show uh, in a moment how we, we go about doing that. Um, we can also see all the different apps installed on this device. We can update it, remove it. Um, we can refresh the app list, and um, we can install the missing apps that um, we need to add for this device. We're also going to show you how you go about adding apps to, to all of your devices that are enrolled in Systems Manager. Um, and you can also check out the activity log in the event log. So um, now I'm going to transition over here into apps. And we're also going to touch into settings DEP. So this is a program that, um, as Raul mentioned, how he um, onboards the device, so he's enrolled in that um, through Apple. That's not something that Meraki mm -hmm. does, but you can use that program to install Systems Manager onto the devices very quickly. Um, another way of doing this too, and Systems Manager stands completely alone. You do have the access points. You can configure it so that when one of those devices connects to the Meraki access point, um, it will automatically enroll into Systems Manager, so into the MDM. So that's something that we call Systems Manager Sentry, and um, it uses the Meraki APs to enroll the devices into Systems Manager. So that's another way of enrolling your devices. Um, so now going into apps here. Um, so this is where we would go about adding apps to the um, store. We're going to go ahead and add an app. Um, we could go to the app store or copy, build a custom app for the library and you're trying to um, enroll that custom app to those devices. You can go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to go to app store and I'm just going to take Facebook. Um, and I can see that that I'm gonna go ahead and roll this out to all of my devices and um, install it. So that's how I would go ahead and install the device or install that app. Um, or I could just select all devices. Or if I had um, again use of tags, if I had um, a t particular devices that are tagged in a particular way. I could go ahead and select with any of the following tags and say maybe MacBook, and then that's how I could install um, those this app to all of those devices. So now going into settings, this is what you're going to do um, to configure particularly um, Different, different restrictions and settings on your device. It's an ad profile. Um, let's go ahead and use Apple since you guys are primarily Apple um, devices, device users. So we're going to select that. We're going to continue. And now we're going to create this profile. Um, we're going to target all of the devices. And now we're going to go ahead and add settings. 
So this is where you can get very granular on specific restrict restrictions and things like that for that particular device. So I'm going to select restrictions. And I'm not going to allow the use of cameras. Um, I'm going to um, not allow FaceTime on my, let's say their iPads, on my mm -hmm. iPads. Um, Raul, can you explain what kind of settings and restrictions you guys did when you um, deployed MBM onto your devices? Sure. Um, essentially, we... Depending on that, initially when we first started, we were a little bit more restrictive, I think. And then as 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 time went on, we realized that folks mean need an access to everything. So for instance, use of the camera, um, we are now face timing now because it's it's something that folks are using in in uh in in programs and whatnot. Uh, we we do allow the installing of apps, even though it may sound a little bit uh um counterintuitive. But in order for us to push apps to the device, we have to enable the installing of apps. But we do prevent the uh, in-app purchasing and stuff like that. So a number of apps, as you know, would um, uh, would allow a user to to purchase an app, purchase additional functionality or additional features within the app, and it's called in-app purchasing, and we, we disallow that because we pretty much want to control the purchasing of apps and how that ha how that how that uh, take how that happens. Um, we also no, what do we do we. It's not very granular. We allow the use of the iTunes store um, occasionally, depending on the, the use of the device. Um, we allow YouTube, JavaScript, and stuff like that. You know, we prevent a lot of things. We prevent like the backups of iCloud, prevent because that takes up a lot of time, and we don't think our use um, our devices, you know, should be should be doing that because we manage them, and nothing of major consequence is really stored on the devices per se. Um, we. What else? We essentially iCloud, Mac OS, as for the Mac OS, iCloud, iOS, um, enterprise books. We don't allow any of those things. As you can, I wish I could show you our screen, but um, <laughs> the screen that I'm looking at. <laughs> but uh, essentially, we we um we just go through based on the use and de determine what what's appropriate. Um, there's also a privacy tab that we we provide. You know, it allows for like location tracking and SSID tracking and stuff. We, we enable those. Right, and uh, we also set the SSID that we would like the device to uh, to to join to automatically um, uh, associate with. Uh, we do that as well uh, under one of the uh, the settings. You know, we we are using iOS as a uh, web content filter. We're trying to, to to see how that works. It's like an auto filter because a lot of the devices are used by by our younger audiences, so it uh it, um, it filters you know pretty much. Um, inappropriate content that may hit the device, um, and that's pretty much what we put in place. Nothing too Hi. crazy. Yeah. Thank you. Um, no problem. Lastly, that I want to show you is the geofencing. I'm just going to quickly tap into this before we um, open up the floor for questions and wrap up. So um, this is a geofence that that you guys have already created. So I'm going to go ahead and click into this. But basically, this is where you would go ahead and create your geofence. So um, you're going to get a notification anytime a device goes outside of this geofence that's been created. Um, so I just wanted to show what that looked like. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and switch gears here, switch out of the dashboard. Before I switch up, is there anything else that you want about the NBN or really? Um, I think we pretty much covered everything. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, so switching gears back into the presentation. Um, that's important. We, basically, the Meraki dashboard gives you the ability to empower your library staff to um, have more collaboration. Um, improve productivity and efficiency, and um, spend more time building new library programs instead of having to worry about the network. And then it also improves just the overall experience for the citizens that are accessing library services. Um, so now I want to talk about, again, 
what we offer um, and our next steps from here. So again, we will offer wireless APs, security appliances, switches, uh, mobile device management, uh, Meraki Insight, which sits on top of the Meraki um, security appliance and provides um, troubleshooting um, either on the WAN, LAN, or the um, service provider, and then also security cameras as well. Um, so now, as far as the next steps go, please check out our blog. Um, if you don't already know who your Meraki account manager is, um, go ahead and 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 sign up for the risk-free evaluation, which is our trial and automatic evaluation for trial of year, um, and they can get that set up for you. You can also check out our um, webinar series. So, um, not sure if you guys are aware, but libraries are also eligible for E-rates. So, this is a great tool. Um, to get some additional funds to um, go ahead and purchase that networking equipment or go with that refresh that you need to do. Um, so I would highly recommend attending one of those webinar series um, to learn more about that program, what that looks like, and, um, and, and how you can use those funds to fund um, the networking projects for the library. And then, um, Lastly, thank you so much for your questions. Um, so, why don't we go ahead and okay, so we have five minutes here. We can answer. Okay, so this question is for Raul. What is the name of the grant or granting organization that you use? What is the name of the grant oh, okay. or granting organization that you use for? I think it was for the project that you guys were talking about. Okay. Um, at the beginning. Right. That's the Dormitory Association of New York. All right. Um, right. That's, uh, it's, that's, yeah, that's pretty much the name of the organization. I mean, we get funding from various grants. That's something that, you know, should be noted. Um, and equipment is purchased from, you know, varying types of grantors over the years. I mean, money is provided to us by varying grantors over the years, and um, that's what we use. But this particular one that I mentioned, uh, which was a pretty large grant, was uh, specifically earmarked for younger audiences and equipment for younger audiences, and that's the Dormitory Association of New York. That's so, Raul, mm -hmm. there's another question here for you. Um, do you utilize much of the traffic shaping rules? Uh, we do, yes. Um, under traffic shaping, what we try to do at, at, at essentially at our central location, because some a number, I, I want to say about a couple of years ago, we had some challenges with regards to um, the the speed of the network and and how folks would interact, and you know we had some complaints and stuff. And we do utilize the traffic shaping rules in order to manage that better. And uh, um, certain types of uh, traffic we to to disallow, um, you know, like peer to peer and stuff like that, which that we know can pretty much. Um, Hog a network a network's bandwidth, so we we disallow that, and um, but we do utilize that on some levels. But and um, one more more question, Raul, for for you um, for your usage. Do you report on number of users or time usage? What number of users? Essentially, what we this is a, that's an interesting question because what we used to report on originally was. Um, so every month, Meraki sends you a, a summary report that lists, somebody said, Rod, is very hard to hear. Can you type the name of the grant? Oh, okay, I saw that. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, every month, Meraki um, sorry, shows what you need devices for that month, and we used to report strictly on that. Um, what we have since discovered is that the other library systems, the New York Public Library and the Queens Public Library systems, they report somewhat differently. They report on daily usage, and as such, we've, we have since decided to, 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 to follow that path as well, and um, that's pretty much what we do. So Meraki does provide that functionality within their summary report where you can pretty much uh, display the daily usage for a period of time. We do that, and that's what we report on every month now. Actually, just started. We just started doing this last month. Fantastic. Um, and then yeah. I have time for one more question. I got 
if I could explain it. Um, so Insight, I, I just pulled up in the dashboard. It's easier for me to just show it here. Um, but Insight is something that takes the data from the Iraqi uh, security appliance, um, where, you know, you're having issues. So either if it's sitting in the LAN, the WAN, or the server. So then what you can do with that is you can actually dive in and get more information on um, those different situations. So let's say maybe it's in the application layer. Um, you can go ahead and see what's going on there, and now you have um, some data that you can go to saying, hey, we're having issues here. Or let's say um, it's in the WAN, um, so you can go to your provider and say, hey, we're not, we're not having um, enough time for seeing a flow down here, what's the issue, um, or your servers, et cetera. So on a very high level, that's what the Meraki Insight can do. Um, so thank you guys so much for the time. Okay. Also for bearing with us when we had a couple minutes there where we were um, getting everything up to speed. Um, please feel free, again, to reach out to your Meraki account manager for more information and a trial. And um, if there's anything else that you have questions on, again, I would encourage you guys to, to reach out to your Meraki account manager to answer those questions. And Raul, thank you so much for taking the time to go through mm -hmm. your dashboard um, um, and why you want Meraki. You're very welcome. Thanks, everybody. My pleasure.